Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. This time is the Storm Collectibles Gears of War 5, Marcus Phoenix, the normal version. So, let's get started. First off, special thanks to Microsoft, Gears of Wars, and Storm Collectibles. I appreciate you guys, and thank you. You guys send this out to me. Uh, so, special thank you and shout out to you uh, for letting me review this. So, let's jump straight into the figure. I know we've seen it a few times in San Diego. We've seen it at New York Comic Con. And uh, I really like what they've done with this guy. He looks absolutely great. And under most lighting, you absolutely get the feel that this is the Marcus from Gears of War 5. Now, with that being said, I don't own any of the NECA stuff anymore. But when I did have it, they were great figures. But I'm looking more into the articulation with the look to match it. So if you sacrifice a little bit of one for the other, I'm okay with that. I know some people aren't, so I'm going to make sure to touch on that as well. But first things first, let's get into the look. He has his traditional scar. He has a new beard. He has the bandana. That's all really dope. And if you can't see it, let's get a closer look with some lighting on it. And as you can see, it definitely looks really good, at least in my opinion. Definitely has a great look. The coloring on him is actually really great. It's something I, uh, I didn't know what to expect until I played the game early uh, at San Diego and got to really enjoy the look and feel of this. And I got to say... If you are a fan of Gears, you should be a fan of these figures. Um, so, now my favorite part comes, and that is the articulation. Now, Marcus can't really look up. That's just out of the question. I don't think anybody with their level of muscle mass when there's no food or water can actually look up because they are super jacked. So, you can look down just a little bit. You can tilt left and right. You definitely can rotate the arm all the way up. And despite the shoulder pads... Being kind of in a not in the way because they're not, but to be in a way where they look like they anyway. These are soft plastic, so rotating them all the way up, so for the figure to lift his arms up is actually pretty easy. You can actually rotate it back down very easily. There's a bicep swivel, allows for very nice rotation, and the arms are double jointed, allowing for really good movement, especially when you're do well, not dual welding, but in this case, holding a two-handed weapon, right? So as far as the upper torso goes. You can swivel left and right very easily. You can actually come down with a very good ab crunch. And that is actually kind of my big deal with these guys is if they can hit the crouching pose. Technically, yes, but more than likely it's no. But, and I'm going to explain why in a second. Now, you also get a lower ab crunch, which allows for even more range of movement, which is all pretty good. The belt is actually movable too, so that way you don't have to worry about breaking anything or anything not being able to move in place. There's a lot of moving parts here which allow you to get more movement. The leg can come all the way up. And it has a double joint, which allows it to come down. The ankle is actually done really, really well. So it rotates back. So if you want to lean back on stuff, that's actually going to be really good. There's a toe pivot as well. And there is boot swivel. Or should I say a boot cut, right? And the ankle actually rotates in a pivot that actually moves in a very good range of motion. Now, one thing's, well, first things first is leaning poses. So leaning around corners is actually not difficult at all for these figures. So uh, let's, uh, I don't have a wall in particular here, but uh, <laughs> let's imagine a wall is here. And even if we just stacked up some containers, right? As you can see, the leaning on him is actually really simple. The only thing you might have a real big, uh, I guess, a gripe about is the toe pivot. If you push it down too far, you'll obviously end up with that and you'll go too far. But balancing wise has actually done a real great job of just looking over so peaking is absolutely very easy with this figure which i love especially in the gears of war franchise now as far as the crouching goes right technically we can get there so as i crouch him down so as you can see here you can technically crouch down now if you widen the leg movement rotate it out you can get a little further down so as you can see here, you can still get get down for cover. These are big figures, but stacked up against barrels or a large wall, you can still get down for cover, but you can get the really low cover, which is probably the only bummer for these figures, movement-wise. But overall, from what I'm seeing and what I'm getting so far from these figures, this is an absolute A-plus movement for these guys. I love the way they look. I love the way they scale. So if you have the old Locust figures... I do believe they scale pretty well with them. And as you can see here, I posed them up actually pretty good. 
and just from a basic stance. So that's that's nice. <laughs> but I do want to talk about the accessories it comes with, which is always part of the fun. So with the heads, you get a young Marcus Phoenix head, which is really cool. So technically, you get two versions of uh, Marcus Phoenix. You get young and old. You get the old head without his bandana. And as you can see here, one face kind of looks uh, a little too small. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think this is what happens when you actually grow a beard and get old. You get an old, mushy face. I'm pretty sure if you've seen anybody go old, that's what's going to happen. Don't debate it. I know old people, right? <laughs> anyway, you also get Dom's combat knife, which is one of the accessories. It's a nice combat knife. It is a soft plastic, so if it bends, you can just heat it up and prevent it from warping by warping it back in its proper place. You get the Nasher, which is like the shotgun for these guys. Really great. Also, some parts are a little soft. So again, if it warps, do believe some hot water or a heat gun will fix your remedy for that. You get uh, Marcus's custom Lancer. It's a very nice piece. Uh, you have the, I forgot the name of this, and I've been looking up this stuff. Forgot the name of it right now, but this is actually the custom piece for him with the chainsaw piece, and they actually add uh, the little bits of blood here for when you basically chainsaw down your enemies, right? With that being said, you also get the Lancer Mark II, which is missing this piece and has an extended little back piece here, and also small variations here on the front of the gun. There's no scope sight, and oh yeah, so there's no scope, and a little bit of change of variance here. So you get the two guns here, right? Then you get the snub pistol, which is very, very nice. It's pretty accurate. I like the paint jobs on these. They're really done really well. But the highlight that we've talked about a few times, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it on my Instagram, is that when I got to play with the prototype, is that these are magnetic on the hip. So the sidearm is actually magnetic. Holds pretty well, too. Right? Only falls under excessive uh, swinging. Now... If we got it on the back, I'm hoping for future releases, we get magnets on the backside, right? Because we actually don't have it for the rest. I do wish we would have gotten it. That would have been really dope. But these are pretty heavy, so that's a little worrisome. But for the sidearm, it is a nice start to the line. And I know Storm tends to listen to their uh, consumers. So if you guys politely ask, hey, what about magnetic backs? I'm pretty sure they'll think about adding it in, especially if they can find a way to add it in. Now, as far as hands go, what he comes with is two hands for holding weapons and pointing. So you can actually point or use these for uh, holding anything. So you can actually, and we all know, I think military style or any type of weapons training is, it's the finger out when not having uh, it active, prepared to shoot, but the finger's always out. So you get two hands for this. You get two hands for holding the weapon with two hands. So for one hand, <clears throat> which happens is, you actually place this uh, in there. Oop. Which one is it? Yeah. So you actually place it inside the thumb out. The hand does fit in there. I don't know why I can't do it on camera. Maybe I'm nervous. But, uh, oh, there it is. Oh, well, it was fitting in there. Now it's not. But uh, you can actually place the hand in there. It does actually fit in there. I've done it earlier. I don't know why it's not working now. Oh, wait. That was technically the wrong hand that's why <laughs> so there's two hands for that this is the open palm hand for just holding items sorry about that this one has individual fingers that open and this one does not and that is because when you are holding an item it slides right in there we go and it has a thumb further out and that's for holding the hand so sorry about that i made a mistake this one is just for holding individual items when you want to do like a frag grenade and thing like that. And I'll get into that one in a second. So you actually have two hands for that. And you also get a normal trigger carrying hand, which is a little crazy because they don't give you a uh, left hand for that, but they give you a right one. And that's mostly because most of the characters are right-handed or carry their weapon right-handed. So this is with the active uh, trigger on the finger. All that being said, I really like with the way these figures came out. They are pretty big for uh, Storm Collectible stuff. Well, sorry. They are pretty average for Storm Collectible stuff when you compare it to some other stuff. And I'm going to get into that right now. So size comparison-wise, let's size him up. Uh, first things first, I'm going to compare him color-wise to his vintage color. And vintage color here 
see the old armor and things like that. Color wise, I really like this one better, but this kind of breaks the color up a little. You get the blue, you get the rust in the gears insignia here. Uh, the head stays the same color wise, but uh, these are darker scheme here. So for those of you that like this mix and match and switch your stuff up, I'm pretty sure if you want to swap out your lower body or anything like that, this would be a great mix and match for you. Let's compare him real quick to Coltrane size wise. Coltrane is actually a little bit bigger than him. So they actually look pretty good together. Can't wait to get the whole squad together. That's actually going to be really fun. I'll review him too. Don't worry. Here's what he looks like next to a larger Marvel Legend. So as you can see, they're actually pretty close in size. So he stands mostly about the size of a large Marvel Legend. Here he is next to a Mezco, which normally outside of the Storm stuff stands at a pretty tall height. And they pretty much tower over him. He's wearing a custom CJ suit. So to, for those of you that ask, it's a custom CJ suit. Here he is next to a smaller. The Mortal Kombat line is technically smaller than most other lines that they have going on. So which, if you use your imagination, you'll see, uh, you know, you can imagine what uh, Goro would be like or Shao Kahn as they are much bigger. And then because I have Guile out, who is a little bit taller than the average one, you'll see that they stand about the same height as well. Guile's flat top makes him a little taller, but different story for a different day. Here he is next to the DC Essentials Brainiac. Ooh, I don't know why it's falling. Here he is next to a Hasbro Lightning Collection Green Ranger and a Marvel Legends Iron Man 80th Anniversary. Last but not least, I do want to compare him to some other stuff. Uh, let me just get it right out as I do this. Here he is next to an SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider, who is completely and utterly tiny compared to him. Now, because I don't have any Locust, the thing I figured that they would end up going up against would probably be like Xenomorphs or, or Yauja, which I think is a great substitute for people like me who don't have those, at least for my photos, right? So, oh, and Mythic Legions which I don't have in front of me, but I think I'll include in photos so you guys can see. So here he is next to a Xenomorph, and I think that size-wise, this will work out actually pretty well as he towers over him. It'll look really good. And then let's move him over then compare him to a Predator. And I would preferably prefer like a Bad Blood because the color scheme would work with that of a Locust. And I think these guys fit in pretty well as stand-ins until we get some Locust stuff like the Warden or anything like that. In the meantime, guys, I think I've covered just about everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it informative. And most of all, hope you guys do good. Be good. Drink your water, guys. Later.